So I want to share something so powerful today, yeah? A peculiar people, yeah? If you're writing, that's, that's the title for today. A peculiar people, yeah? Just like you. You are the peculiar people. You are special people. Very awesome people. And before we go up to how peculiar you are, I have two, two jokes that I, I just saw randomly. Some of these jokes I tell you where I saw it, some I don't, but it, it's original. I've seen it, it's not Chinese. And the, this one was trending, especially when the, the lockdown just started. I think some of you saw it on Facebook. That, but have you ever thought of the fact that the landlord might have low-key texted other tenants not to pay rent? But since you talk too much English, when there is no water, <laughs> you're not on the list. <laughs> You're there still paying full rent. <laughs> because every time you're the one who stands up for the... Huh? <laughs> yeah, then another one said, if government closes beauty shops, we might see worse things than corona. <laughs> Definitely that's not for you guys. <laughs> that's for the people out there. <laughs> Do you go to beauty shops also? <laughs> don't, don't be shy. <laughs> you know, when, when you go to the car shop, what do you go to buy? Uh, when you go to the beauty shop? <laughs> so there, <laughs> there people who need to buy some beauty. <laughs> yeah, but I believe you people are a peculiar people, and this message is particularly for you. The word peculiar means different to what is normal. That is, that is dictionary meaning, first meaning. Different to what is normal. Or expected, strange, different to what is normal. And God calls us a peculiar people. In other words, we are different from what is normal. We are different from what is normal. Many times Christians feel so afraid of being different. But you see, that is what God has called us. We are different from what is normal. Ours is not just the normal. We are very different. And when I got born again, I just felt this difference. Even growing up, just looking at my parents, them being born again, there are things I saw that were just so different from what I saw out there. And there's just some, like there, there, there are things as a Christian I could not stand that everyone could stand. There are things as a Christian that would, would make sense, yet they didn't make sense to other people. And you see, many times we forfeit what God has for us, trying not to be peculiar, trying to fit in. God didn't call us to fit in. He called us to stand out. That is why he says that you are like a city on a hill. That city set on a hill, it cannot be moved. And it is very seen, very evident. Even from far, it is evident. That is why army forts, many were built on hills, because it is hard you see, they, they can see, they can watch all over the city. And yet it is also, it is harder to, to attack a city on a hill. It is harder to overcome a city on a hill. You are a peculiar people. God has called you a peculiar people. Just think about it. Think about it when you just got born again. Especially many of you who got born again as adults. I'm sure it made a lot of sense. The joy that you experienced you felt like you had just crossed a certain threshold. You just felt like something. Maybe because I got born again when I was very young, but maybe the experience I remember very much is when I got filled with the Holy Spirit and started speaking in tongues. I felt like I was the most holy person on earth. All these other preachers I used to watch, that I used, I used, to, I used to watch Ben Hinn and I used to think, wow, this man must be... Very close to God. Maybe he's chief advisor to Jesus. You get it like, because <laughs> I would watch those meetings when he's just saying, 
fire on you and people are over there. And I look at him, he's a tiny man. I'm like, that man carries God. When I spoke in tongues, I felt like he was smaller than me. I felt like I, if I can meet him and just tell him my relationship with God. <laughs> I felt so big. And you see, I think that's how God wants us to feel. We are so big. We are so important. We are so important. The world has made us feel small, but we are so important. We are so valuable to God. Many people will say, if you do not do it, God will get another person to do it. It's a lie. Your work is your work. If you're called to preach the gospel, it's true other people will preach the gospel, but not like you would preach it. As in, God was not trying. God was not... The Bible says the hair on your head is numbered. Not counted, numbered. Numbered means if one falls, for those of us who are left with a few, if one falls... <laughs> If one falls, he doesn't say, ah, he had 300 hair left. Now he has 299 left. No. If one falls, it's like, that was 156. It is the one that fell. They are not just counted. They are numbered. Each has a number. That is how God is interested in us. And that is, if the hair on our head is numbered, then we are numbered. We are known. So you're not in a set of people that God called and said, let them get born again. Whoever obeys shall preach. Whoever obeys shall do this. Then when you don't do it, they say, okay, is there a send in a substitute? No. And you see, it's just like in soccer. Those who watch soccer and they're enjoying soccer. But you see, like in football, it's true a player will be substituted. You get it? But the other player cannot do what the other one does. They will come and do something that the team da requires, but they can't play like the other person. They can't. Even if they're in the same number. None of them is the same. Their styles are not the same. Some have been wingers who have been very high goal scorers. Some have been wingers who are just, they just have many assists. They don't score goals. And it is the same thing with you. You may be a preacher. You may be an evangelist in a set of evangelists, but you're different. You're different. Your role is different. You're peculiar. And every time we try to fit in, we lose that individuality that God purposed for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you, should, you should feel as important as God feels you are. But see, at times when you start feeling important, you think, am I being proud? No, you're just waking up to the reality of who you are. When you read Paul's statements in the Bible, he really knew who he was. Many things he spoke. He says we are seated in heavenly places. It is Paul saying that. It was not being arrogant. He knew. Paul says, my God. My God. He called him his God. He didn't say our God. You see, today when you say, oh, my God, they say, hey, do you mean he's not my God? We all have the same God. That has to be personal revelation. I don't know if he's the same God we have. Praise the Lord. But as I know, I know mine. Praise Jesus. You are a special people. You are a peculiar people. And God has called you for greatness. Yeah. Um, let's read. I want us to read uh, Malachi. Let's read Malachi 3. We'll read from verse 12 to 18. I know many would have wanted me to read 10. But you can read it in your free time. <laughs> but 12 is just after 10. Uh, and all nations shall call you blessed, for ye are, for ye shall be delightsome, a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's read an amplified version. Let's read verse 12 in the amplified. In the amplified, he says, happy and blessed. Yeah? And all nations shall call you happy and blessed. For you shall be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. All nations shall call you happy and blessed. That word that is normally used there for, for blessed, that Hebrew word, it is a word that means happy, it is a word that means blessed, it is a word that means leader, it's a word that means on top, 
it is a word that means straight, that word that is used there. Straight, happy, blessed, leader, on top, you are. That is what God says about you. It is what he says about you, that you are happy. And all nations shall call you. And I'm telling you, that is so true. I've seen that, especially among many of you. Yesterday we were here with the, with the, the people serving, ushers, worship team, and the other groups. We were here, and I was telling them, it would be so sad that when corona came, we reduced our preaching on healing, we reduced our preaching on giving, we reduced our preaching on God wants you well, or happy, because it is during such times that even the world can know if what we've been speaking is what we really believe. It is during such times. The Bible says, he says, woe unto him who faints during time of adversity. It means you are not prepared enough. Have you ever seen soldiers? Who has ever seen a soldier? A few people. And you, where did you get the army face mask? Are you a soldier? You're going to be arrested. <laughs> ah, you should get me one. But <laughs> me, I can't be arrested. I'm, I'm just warning that I can be arrested. But okay, if you've seen like people who do special operations, yeah? Like special ops. Yeah, Pato knows something about the army. In Kenya, maybe it would be the Reke Squad. Yeah? In US, they have SEAL Team. One, six, three, all the SEAL teams. Um, every, many countries have their own teams. These guys are trained for adversity that they look forward to it. They look forward to it. So when guys like SEAL Team, some of you have watched SEAL Team movies, you see if they are taken like to Afghanistan and there is intel that is still being gathered and they are just at the base, they keep asking, when are we going, what did we come for? You get it? When they hear gunshots, they hear, they say, when are we going there? You get what I'm saying? They don't say, are we safe? This is what they... As in they are prepared for this. It is what they long for. Now Paul calls us soldiers. These are the times we long for. This is, and that is why God said that during this time, one of the prophecies that was given about coronavirus, I, prayed that, I played that prophecy for you, prophecy from Bishop Isaiah, that there will be a distinction between the church and the world. The church, meaning those who have really adhered to the teachings of Christ, those that have really given themselves to God, it's not just religion. We believe what the Bible says. And this has been a very exciting time. Praise the Lord. Because you see, during this time, we know that we are the only ones that can stand out. We know that we are the only ones that can be happy 24-7. We know that right now, the Bible says, gross darkness shall cover the earth. But you see, gross darkness is an opportunity even for the smallest light to shine. It is gross darkness that does that. So when they say gross darkness shall cover the earth, man, that is when we should be excited as Christians. Gross darkness shall cover the earth. And you see, he says that in Isaiah when he's saying, You'll let your light shine. When he says, arise and shine. Because he says gross darkness shall cover the earth. That is, you see, when we were young, we used to play with those small bulbs. You know the bulbs that used to be in those torches? Those torches are not there today. Many of you who are young, you never saw those torches. Oh, you missed a lot. Today's torches are LEDs and, and whatever. We had those torches. They were very, they had a red button. <laughs> Somebody said that red button was to, to what? It was to, it was for an alarm for, for the, when the thief with <laughs> You young people may never know those torches. They are fully metallic with a red. But you see, so we used to remove those bulbs, and that was maybe we were good children actually, but it's just one of the things our parents came, that's why I don't know why. But you see, we used to remove those bulbs because 
And when we remove it, we preferred having the bulb lit with our batteries and a wire, and you put it, we preferred it that way than in the torch. We, we wanted it. But you see, that bulb, during daytime, no one would, would even notice that you're lighting that bulb there. So we loved night, because at night, when it's flickering, and everyone would see it. Why? Because darkness is opportunity for any light to shine. Any light to shine. So even if you've been thinking that you have very small faith, you're not so spiritual. If you really believe in God, as young as you are as a Christian, this is a very awesome moment for you to shine. This is the moment the world can see your light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So he's telling us that you will be called. Why? Because it is seeing, they are seeing. The heathen shall call you a blessed people. They shall call you a blessed people. I know some of you, some of you, I know a number of people here who the jobs they were doing were just jobs on contract basis. Or there are some of you who have stopped earning like a monthly salary during this time. You get it? But your relatives are looking at you and wondering, how are you still paying that rent? How are you still living in Nairobi? Gross darkness. When you are earning a salary, they didn't even look at you as something important. Because there is no gross darkness. You get it? And you see, right now you can sit them down and tell them, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Actually, it begins in John 3.16. Then, you see, it's a very good opportunity for them to listen to you. Because now your light can be so visible. Your light is shining so well. Hallelujah. Then, just a number, of, a number of things, a number of things. I know even people who, during this time, I know people, even in this ministry, that became sick, either with a fever or whatever. They said, no, I should not go to hospital. Because if I go to hospital, they will just say, you have corona, and they will, or they will put me in isolation. So I don't go. So people around them see them just get healed without going to hospital. Darkness working for your good. Because initially, whenever that came, you're like, ah, I have a cover with... UAP, you swipe, yes. Doctor, can you add more dawa? <laughs> so now you fear isolation, but your light can shine. So like, you mean you just got healed? Yes. Let me tell you about Isaiah 53. By his stripes, I was healed. Like, it's just, right now it's so easy for light to shine. You get it? You, how are you smiling? Your business is closed. You guys are okay? You okay? Yes. We can even give you some of that okay. We can... <laughs> We, we, we can help you. We are very okay. We are going through this. We are a peculiar people. When the world is expecting us to be crying, we are laughing. When they are laughing, we are crying. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the world laughs. Let, let's see how he says it in Malachi. Let's go back to Malachi from verse 13 to 18. You're going to see some of these things that he says here. Very amazing things. He says, your words have been strong and hurt against me, says the Lord. Yet you say, what have we spoken against you? You have said it is useless to serve God. Or it is useless to love God. It is useless to give yourself to God. And what profit is it if we keep his ordinances and walk gloomily and as if in mourning, in mourning apparel before the Lord of hosts? And now you con we consider the proud and arrogant to be happy and favored. You see, that is what has been happening in the world. The role models are those who are arrogant, are those who have no values for God. They don't the consider to be the role models. Oh, so and so is rich. Have you seen Escobar? How many remember Escobar? Yeah, a few of you are my age mates. Escobar died when I was four years of age. <laughs> that is what he's saying that those are the ones that we have exalted. They are the ones that we are like, these are the cool people. And those who have decided to live for God, ah, no, those are losers. Those are, yeah? That, that is what we consider. And we say, when they, when they test God, they escape punishment. You see? Escoba walked into court and he even still had his bodyguard in court and he just slapped some money on the desk and the judge left him and as in Escobar built his own prison. Yeah, he said about Escobar. <laughs> Colombia wanted to arrest him and he told them, no, 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 no. no. I will agree to be arrested, but if I only build my prison. He built it on a hill. It had jacuzzis, a swimming pool, a football pitch, a nightclub. That's the prison. 
and he had a spot where he had put a very good binoculars, big, overlooking his home. Buried barrels of money under the football pitch. So America had to come in to help Colombia. So when America came in to attack, the football pitch was dug. Dollars were taken out and he went on the run. You know, you're like, I want to be like that guy. He builds his own prison. Because you know, you're thinking, even when he does wrong, he gets high with it, unpunished. You get, that's what we feel. That's what you feel at your workplace. Your colleague who is bribing, ever bribing, is done getting promotion. The business you're competing with that is evading their taxes and doing all that, it's done that's seeming to be prospering. And we admire those people. Let's go to verse 16. Then those who feared the Lord talked often one to another. And the Lord listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him of those who reverenced and worshipfully feared the Lord and who thought on his name. Let's read that in NIV. Let's read that in NIV. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored him or honored his name. Imagine that when those who genuinely loved God and served God, when they talked, when they had their private conversations, not prayer conversations, the Lord listened in and a scroll was recorded of what they, they said. Isn't that, you see why it's so important for you to fill yourself with the word of God? Because your conversation is as important as your prayer. It is as powerful as your prayer. So if your conversation, you're just there with friends saying, hey, this corona, corona is going to finish us. We are going to die. That is what is being registered. The devil is also listening in and writing his scrolls. You get it? But if in your conversations there, you're like, hey, we are getting out of this stronger than we got in. We, 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 we are thriving. All that is being listened to. So when you fill yourself with the word of God, there are things you can't stand and there are things you can't say. You can't fit in because you're peculiar. So as everyone is saying something that seems to be normal, to you it's not normal. You're peculiar. He's already told you you're a peculiar person. And these are the conversations that you're having and God is listening in for these conversations. These conversations honor God. They honor his word. God is listening in to these conversations. And that is why sometimes if you've been just walking by faith, there are many things that you see happen in your life that are not necessarily, you didn't necessarily pray like you knelt and said, oh, Father, this and this. But they are things you speak about in faith and eventually you see them happen. You get it? Eventually you see them happen. One simple one, whenever we used to talk about having a church venue, we used to talk about a place without pillars. I don't think it is something we particularly prayed about. But like we want a place without pillars. All the other places that we got before this place had pillars. You see? We, we didn't want to, you see you already have a mask, then you're seated behind a pillar. You see how that would not be fair? <laughs> you know, so now when we came, there's a place here to look at, then we come and look at the place, you're like, what? It even has no pillars. You see how that was exciting? There are conversations like that. There are conversations I had with people about the kind of wife I wanted. And people would tell me, that cannot happen. And I just, you know, I've always been so adamant about what I believe. At times it's good to be adamant. I used to tell them, just wait, watch the space. Yeah? When we were in Bible school, there's someone who told us about uh, how marriage, he, ha husbands are bad, or wives are this, or this, and this, and this. We were in the same Bible school with Pato. And by that time, I was just married for, I, I was in my first year of marriage. I went back, these were ladies, I think the age of my, my mom, I don't know, in their 50s. I went back there on their desk and I told them, just that you're having a bad marriage, don't think we are all going to have a bad marriage. I went and told them. I could not stand some of those words. Because you see, when I speak out, they would say, he's just in honeymoon. I told her, your problems didn't begin after 30 years of marriage. Remember your honeymoon also. You, you, you get what I'm saying? That sounds mean, but there are things I could not stand. Because there are things I believe. 
and I want to speak. You know, when he tells us, hold fast to the confession of your faith. Hold fast to the profession of your faith. What does that mean? Confession means to say the same thing. I want to say the same thing that God says. Not whatever the world is throwing at me. That is why many Christians feel the smallness that they feel inside. God shows you how big you are. How important you are. You know you are the most important person on the universe. You, you carry God. You are the headquarters of God on earth. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit makes his home in you. With you. Praise the Lord. Who is more important than that? Who is more important than that? That's why I don't like it when our preachers go to state house to beg. Why do you never go to state house with a word? You get it? And now we are trying to, to tell them how church is essential. No, they've seen. They've been our help. They are the essential ones. You get it? Because whatever they say, say, oh, yes, our Lord, yes, our Lord. And whatever God says, we say, oh, we need wisdom, we need wisdom. <laughs> so who is Lord here? The government says they know who is Lord. They say something, we run and do. We ask them, how high can we jump? You see? When God says, say, we need wisdom. He says, go preach. I want you to start doing crusades in the city and what? Now we need wisdom. Uh, we've not gone through Bible school. We've not... But when the government says, close your churches, a hundred people, say, now because of wisdom and we've prayerfully considered for the next three years we are not going to be having church. Hmm? Cowardice many times masquerades as wisdom. But you see, God has made us so big. He's made us so important. He's made us so peculiar. And you see, when you get to understand that, first of all, you're going to love yourself. You're going to love yourself. There's nothing wrong with you loving yourself. God wants you to love yourself. God wants, he's the lifter of our heads. God doesn't want his children to walk with their heads down. Feeling small, feeling insufficient. I like what the message version says. When Paul says, all things are yours. Paul says, the smallness that you feel. He says, we are not the ones who caged you in. You get it? That smallness that you feel. We are not the ones that, in others, no one can cage you in. Whichever smallness or insufficiency you feel, it is you who has caged yourself in. Your teacher who puts 26% has nothing to do with your future. They have, as in, you know, God thought about you before they even figured out they were to be a teacher. Maybe they're even a teacher because they filled for the course they wanted to go for. You get what I'm saying? So, but you know, you've left your future in their hands. That because they put 26 on your paper, you say, I'm never good. I'm never going to amount. That is for rich people. That is for certain people. That is for people who have studied like that. Who told you that? Yeah? You know, I preached this gospel from when I was 17. 2007. I preached the gospel. I took invitations to churches. People would ask me, which Bible school do you come from? School of the Holy Ghost. As in, you know, I didn't feel intimidated because preachers would start introducing themselves at that time and say, I am Dr. Reverend Evangelist Engineer so-and-so. <laughs> when I was in Chicago preaching there, we had some meetings. Then we went to California. Then we... You get it? And me, I would stand and I say, praise the Lord. When I was in the world, God came to me. <laughs> that already puts me higher than them. <laughs> God came to me. You get it? He didn't meet me in Chicago. He didn't meet me in California. He came where I was. You get it? He came. The creator of the universe and the earth. He came where I was. How can you feel small after knowing that? You get it? So that's how... I preached the gospel and preached the gospel, preached everywhere. When I just came to Kenya, we had conferences we were doing. I would wash this shirt in the night, put on the other one in the morning, and, and all these preachers I'm preaching with are coming. They are parking different cars. They have uh, nice watches, nice suits every day. I, mean, I don't have a single suit to put on. But you see, people would wonder how I am so confident to show up with a matatu, my dusty shoes, I go to the bathroom, I try to clean them a bit, and you know tissue can't really clean dust very well. Up. <laughs> there, you see, and stand there and preach the gospel in power. Why? Because 
I am so big to be defined by shoes, to be defined by cars, to be defined by clothes. I am so big to be defined by a Bible school certificate, by an ordination certificate. I'm bigger than that. Before I was created in my mother's womb, before there were Bible schools, before there were cars, before there were what, he knew me and ordained me. Praise the Lord. So when I showed up, I showed up as a solution. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoever is not on board, it is... They are the ones missing. They better get on board. Praise Jesus. That is how big he's made us. Peculiar. A peculiar people. So I can't look at Escobar anymore and think he has the life and I don't have the life. Hallelujah. Because God hears and he writes whatever I'm speaking about, whatever conversations are going on, and I feel myself with the word of God. I feel myself with what I hear from the Bible. And that is what I want to speak in my house. That is what I want to speak with other people. I don't entertain small talk around me and I don't want small talk around me. Praise the Lord. I don't like people who speak small. Praise Jesus. Okay, I like people who speak small, but I don't like their small talk. <laughs> verse 17. <laughs> Let's go to verse 17. They will be mine, says the Lord. Ooh, I am his. Hey, They will be mine. I am God's. I'm not the president's. I'm not these nations. I'm not the tribes. I am God's. I'm not the political parties. I am God's. They shall be mine. In the day when I make my treasured possession, I'll spare them just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him. Verse 18. And you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. And that distinction is being made so clear during this time, even within the church, so clear, so clear. Like I'm telling you, there are people who have lost jobs, but their countenance has not changed. There are people whose salaries have just been reduced by 10% and they are depressed. There is a distinction. Clear. Very evident. Those who serve God. And you see, with this, you can't pretend. You see, you can't pretend to be okay. You get it? You can't. <laughs> I, I, I like it that the lockdown has been so long. So if you pretended, you only pretended for April. <laughs> and so, March came. Then the other, then you realize now pretense. Kumekuangori. <laughs> <laughs> no more pretense here. But you see, if you really have the joy and the peace of the Lord, <laughs> even when you're kicked out of that house and you're on the street, even when you're kicked off the street by Kanjo, wherever you go, people find you and when they remove the mask, I think that guy is still happy. You know, even on your deathbed, you're just happy. You're just praising the Lord. Why? Because he's a reality to you. There are far more treasures that you've seen than what this earth has been clinging to. During this time, marriages have fallen apart. Businesses have fallen apart. Relationships have fallen apart. Why? Because people held on things that could be shaken. But he says, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. He says, young men shall utterly fall. All men shall faint. Young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. They that wait on the Lord. We just renew our strength. Every time, every season, we just renew our... Why? Because we are peculiar. We are a peculiar people. Hallelujah. Let's read Psalm 68, verse, eight, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord, who daily loadeth us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Sila. <laughs> yeah? Who daily loads us with benefits. Daily. That word daily there, if you read it in the Hebrew, that word means from sunrise to sunset. Daily. Daily loads us with benefits. And you see, 
Somebody may say, why don't I see them? <laughs> you think I'm going to believe you over God? If you don't see them, you're the one who needs specs. Because him, he said, he daily, they are there. Praise the Lord. That is enough to rejoice even before I see them. <laughs> yeah? I can dance the whole day just to that. As in, he daily, Lord, he didn't say, apart from when the corona period comes. Now his benefits are, he reduces them. No, no, no. He says, who oh, daily loads us with benefits? Daily. Every day I wake up with a new benefit. Every day I wake up with a reason to praise the Lord. Every day I wake up rejoicing. Praise Jesus. Why? The first benefit is that I have him as an inheritance. He told Abraham, I'll be your portion, your reward, your inheritance. He is my inheritance, and he's a reality. He's a reality. And you see, these are not just stories. I had an experience. I've told you about this. I had an experience when I was in high school where I didn't, even, I didn't want to finish school. I didn't want anything to do with this world. God made me test contentment of being in him. And you know, I used to think, well, if I, I, I don't care if I ever graduate. I don't care if I ever get married. I don't care if I ever get a job. I don't care if I ever get known. If I can just get some place where I can put a mad heart and I just live there with him every day for the rest of my life, as in I was sure that would suffice me. I was so sure because he is so, so good. With him, I'm complete. I am complete. I am complete with him. You know, he's so real. He's so real. You know, you get there and you stop. Because you see, right now, what has disappointed many people is these things that we have been chasing, which things are like the path of the wind, those things. But you see, if he became your reality, that is why it is good for Christians to be wealthy. It's good for people to be wealthy, but it is not good for wealth to own you. It is not good for wealth to have you. Praise the Lord. Because when it goes, you also go. Because it had you. It was your king. But if you have him first, if he is your reality, man, you are complete without anything. So whatever comes, it is not a big deal. You see, like this building, once the, the pillars were made, the slabs were made, the roof was put, it's like the building was complete. You get it? Because that's the skeleton of the building. That is what holds the building. So the grey that we've put inside here does not make the building better. Maybe it looks better, but it doesn't. If somebody comes to that and puts an ugly color, I was going to say the ugly color, then I looked around at what people are putting on. But you, you see, if somebody comes and <laughs> if somebody comes and puts on, I saw that none of you has an ugly color, so there is no reference. But you see, if somebody comes and puts on an ugly color, the building is not going to change. It's not going to be a bad building. You get what I'm saying? So that is what happens to us. When wealth is added to you, it doesn't make you a better person. It is just a better person handling wealth. You get what I'm saying? So it is because of not enjoying this relationship or the reality of this relationship with God, that is why there is a lot of devastation right now in the world. Because God has never been enough to most of the people. Praise the Lord. And you should be proud of yourself. That is why you are a peculiar person. I'm sure that is why you've even come for service. There are those who are even still scared of coming for service. Even with social distancing. And yet if it was up to me, there would be no social distancing. I want to hug all of you. It's been a while. <laughs> Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. Let me just look at these verses and just see. What God says. Blessed be the God. Ah, sorry. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. Imagine, he, causes, he always causes us to triumph. In other words, no matter what comes my way, you can be sure of the results. Winner. I'm coming out away. No matter. He always goes. You know, when I read this word, I really believe it. I don't believe there is a situation over which I can't triumph. 
Because he said it. It is not me who said it. And he is my Lord. It is him that I follow. He's the one who owns me. So if he says that he always causes me to triumph, that is it. No situation is taking me down. And you see, my role model, my hero, showed us this also. You read the book of John, John chapter 1. Go to verse 11, 12, 13, 14. Read John, and you're going to see that they came to arrest him. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to stone him, and they couldn't because it was not his time. They couldn't. And he emphasized to them. He told them, no one can take my life. I have received a command to lay it down and pick it up again. In other words, you can't kill me. <laughs> so he gets before Pontius Pilate. And he's before Pontius Pilate and he's like, Pontius Pilate is, is trying to tell him, you, now you're here. You know your life is in my hands. I can decide to kill you. And he's like, because <laughs> you see, Jesus had been quiet all this time. They slapped him. They spat on him. They asked him, prophesy, who spat you? They blindfolded him. And he was silent. Then Pontius Pilate touched a wrong button. He says, do you know, right now, I can decide whether you die or what. Jesus opened his mouth. Told him, young man, hey, no one takes my life. It is me who lays it down. And I take it up again. And they tried. They beat him. He bled. A level of bleeding to which anyone would die. He didn't die. They put him on that cross. He didn't die. Until he said, it is done. And he gave up the ghost. And when the third day came, he picked himself up. Just like he had said, that is my role model. That is my hero. That is the one I'm following. What can put me down? What can put me down? Let whatever, let whatever the devil tries to throw at me come. In the end, I'll be here. I'm a wise builder. I build on the rock. When the storm came, the shock was on the storm. My house was still standing. The one on sand was fallen. And so you see, many houses have been built on sand during this time. I, like, I think I read something posted by, either it was Bishop J.B. Masinde, saying, this is not the time, like it is not the time to, to see how you build, it is the time to test how you build. This is the time the storm has already come. So it's not the time to be wise on how you build. This is the time to test how did you build. You get it? If your whole life has just gone down because of this season. There are people even whose salaries have been increased, but they are still sad because of the whole season. You get it? Just showing you that no ma there is nothing there. No ma whatever you put your, 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 whatever your security is in, it will be shaken one day if it is not in the Lord. It is only those that wait upon the Lord that can renew their strength during such times, that will stand and not faint. It is only those. But this God, he always causes us to triumph. What if you speak that every day? He causes me to triumph daily. He always causes me to triumph. So what has come your way? Is your boss giving you a bad report? Have that at the back of your mind. He causes me to triumph. He causes me to triumph. The word of God is true. And you see somebody may say, but why don't I see it? You're not, you're not that big. It's true I've been telling you about how big you are. You get it? <laughs> but you know, you're not that big to be that determinant whether God's word is true or not. <laughs> you get it? You're not yet that level. You're not God's ad adjudicator. Yeah? You're not God's, God's what? You're not God's chief whip or umpire or you're not, you're not God's judge. You're not, you're not there that... You see, God said it like that, but I don't see it in my life. I don't see it in my life. You may never see it. And God will not become God when he proves to you that it's there. But you see, at times that's how religion makes us reason. If he is really God, let him show me this. I know we think that when God answers that prayer, now he feels good that he... <laughs> ah, nah. You get it? If he is really God, no, he is God. <laughs> Whether you see it or not. Isn't it amazing that when the Hebrew boys were in the fire, they didn't see the fourth man? 
God was not there to prove himself to them. You know, we always talk about the fourth man that was in the fire. The, the Bible doesn't say that the, the three boys saw him. They were just in the fire. And they knew their God would be with them. Did they need to see? No. They believed. He said it, he would be with them. So he was with them. So that's what happens many times because we are so carnal and we are used to what we see, what we touch, what we... So when you, you're sick, your salary is going down, your relative is quarreling, you say, God has left me. It is because of being so carnal. He said he will never leave you nor forsake you. He said it. And we sing songs like, if you said it, we believe it. <laughs> then a time comes for really believing. And then they say, where has he gone? Okay, I don't see God. Okay, I don't see God. He's not to be seen with your naked eyes. Praise the Lord. He always causes us to triumph. He always causes us to triumph. Look at that. And then it is so amazing that the enemy saw the fourth man. The king who had thrown them in is the one who said, didn't we throw in three people? Who is that fourth man? He looks like the son of God. He looks like the son of man. How did he even know about the son of God? Praise the Lord. So you know, at times you may be going through turmoil, but the enemy is seeing that fourth man. You see, you don't need to see. Because you know him. He lives in you. The enemy is the one who needs to see now. That they that are for you <laughs> are greater than whatever he has. So right now the devil may think he's winning. That is why your praise is so important. Never allow the devil to kill your praise. Because as you keep praising, I was sharing this when we were doing the Zoom call. I was talking about the, the victim mentality. You know the victim mentality is so big around the world. And yet you're going to realize that no one has made it being a victim. And you see, that's something that God was also speaking to me, even concerning the church. We can complain about whatever the government is not doing right, and we end up being a victim. It's not going to solve anything. God has given us authority. There are things we can change. Praise the Lord. And if you see government, media, what? Many of them are not believers, and they are anti-God. The last week, you see how they, every day they reported how we had the highest cases, how we had the highest cases. Now, I think the last two days, we've not seen anything. You get it? They can't report and say the cases have dropped. They only report when it can scare you. You get what I'm saying? So we start complaining about people. What do you expect of them? They are not believers. So when we play the victim, we think that they will help us. Being a victim has never helped anyone. No one has made it. We cry to the government, oh, can you imagine the government of Rwanda is giving people money? The government of where? How many billionaires have you heard from there? How many billionaires have you had that were given money by the government? That's how they became billionaires. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So victim mentality is not, it, it does not take us anywhere. So even in our prayer life, we can't just keep praying as victims. And number one way to erase that victim mentality is to keep a life of praise. A life of praise comes from us knowing he daily loads us with benefits. He always causes us to triumph. So you, you, you thank God. You, and, and that is what I think. That, that was the mentality among the Hebrew boys. Because you see the Hebrew boys come up and the Hebrew boys are like, uh, they are like, our God shall surely save us from this fire. That is praise. But even if he does not, we shall not bow. They were not victims. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. They were not victims. They come up in that. He shall surely save us from this. They appraise us. They, 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 they have that mentality. Because when you are a victim, you easy pray for the devil. The devil hears it in your prayers. And the more we get to know the word, the more we realize that we can't just be victims. Look at Paul. Paul is in prison and he's saying rejoice. And again I say rejoice. In prison. He's writing to those who are not in prison. And he's telling them, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. Imagine. Paul is writing to Timothy. And he's telling him, stir up. Stir up that gift in you that you received by laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Paul is stirring Timothy. People outside are heartbroken for Paul who is in prison. And him in prison is preaching the gospel. He's saying, God is being glorified even in my bones. I am winning more even in my bones. That is who you are. You are peculiar. You know, at times people think, why? 
Why is he so hard? Why is pastor so hard on people? It is because I know who you are. And I can't watch you for fating who you are. Because during these seasons, you're going to fall down. It is just like when you're going through battle. When there's battle, I mean when, there's, when, when you're going through boot camp, army training and all that. These guys are hard on you. You wake up at this time, they, they, they pour cold water on you. They lash you. They punish you. They, they brutalize you. You've seen like those um, American what? Navy seals and what? They are locked in a gas chamber with tear gas, with no masks. It is part of training. And you would say, if the commander really loved us, he wouldn't expose us to this. It is because he really loves you. Because when you're arrested in Afghanistan, this is what they are going to do to you. And you're going to die because of shock. You get it? You're not going to die because they've, they've killed you. You're going to die because you're seeing the cruelty that is coming towards you. So because he loves you, he's preparing you for that. And I believe as a preacher, God has called me to preach such a gospel. God has called me to preach to people, to wake them up to the reality of who they are. For them to see that Paul says, as a good soldier, he refers to us as soldiers. Christianity is not passive. But you see, when hard times come, now we substitute scriptures with good sayings. You get it? Before the corona season is here, we say, they that dwell in Zion shall not say, I am sick. We say, as in we say many awesome things, by his stripes we were healed. We shall not lack. We say our declarations here. Then when this season comes, because we are not trained as good soldiers, now we start saying, oh, you see this season, eh, finances are tough. What? No, those are not the people God is raising. God is raising an army that is going to shake Kenya. Yeah? And I really, really, really believe that you're one of them. An army, a mighty army of God that is going to shake Kenya. But one thing that is going to be so evident about this army is consistency, no matter the season. It is consistency. It is consistency. It is consistency. Maurice Cerullo just passed on. Maurice Cerullo had a, a training. He used to call it God's Victorious Army, GVA. And he, he's raising nationals to, to, to spread the gospel. And they had a song which was like their anthem. And you know they would sing and say, Huh? It says, God, God's got an army. He says, they come with healing in their hands, with joy. What oh, joy, gladness. He's speaking about these things that the army has, and that is the army that we are. You get it? That when the world saw us before corona period, we were the same. Corona period comes, we are the same. Election period comes, we are the same. Another season comes, we are the same. That is a good soldier. A soldier who in times of battle can have their acts together. Anytime. But you see, he can only do that by knowing what he knows, the truth that he knows. So if we know that he daily loads us with benefits, that is what we are seeing about the Hebrew boys. They knew who they were. Before they were arrested to be taken into captivity in Babylon, they were the same people. They are brought into captivity. They say, we shall not eat food offered to idols. Give us vegetables and we will be okay. And they are told to worship this idol. They refuse, as in they were the same people. They didn't say conditions have changed. Now we are in exile. Anything can pass. No, they didn't change. Peculiar people. They stood out. Imagine just three people standing out in a whole nation. That is peculiar. They didn't try to fit in. They didn't try to use wisdom because it would have been wisdom of this world. A lot of what we call wisdom is wisdom of this world. The Bible talks of two wisdoms. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read two more scriptures. John 11, 3, 3, John 11 verse 3. Ah. Yeah, John 11 from verse 3 to 6. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. You see how that is manipulation? You get it? Because they knew that Jesus was friends 
Now, other version will say, your friend, Lazarus, your friend. And the Greek word there used for love there, it is the word philio, from which we get Philadelphia. It is friendly love. You get it? They are saying, your friend is sick. The one you love is sick. In other words, that will make him run because his friend is sick. You get what I'm saying? Go on. When Jesus heard that, he, was, he said, this sickness is not unto death, praise the Lord, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. I like Jesus. No wonder he came to show us who we are. He said, this sickness is not unto death. This corona period is not unto death. And it can't kill the church. Like we've said, this church shall not be shaken. And this is the truth. Whoever tried to kill the church, it grew more. In China, where they burnt the church, China has the biggest church in the world. You can't kill the church. You can't. It is the church of God. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Sanctions may be put on, what? but you can't kill the church. You can't. So he, he says, Jesus says, it is not unto death. And now many people who will say, what if my sickness is to glorify God? There is no, every time you see in scripture, whenever he's talked about so that God may be glorified, the other time was when he, they asked him, this blind man, is it his parents that sinned or his, who sinned so that he's blind? And he says, no one. If this is so that God can be glorified. You will see that the only time it gives God glory is when it is healed. So you can't be okay staying sick to give God glory. In the Bible, you'll see that it's clear. Every time it, God, it gave God glory, it's when it was healed. When it was averted. Let's go to, yeah? Let's go to verse 5. Now Jesus loved Martha. Now that word love there is the word agape, the love of God, and her sister and Lazarus. We should read that verse in, read it in NLT. Go back to verse 5. Let's read it in NLT. I want to see. King James, uh, the, like, why, why is this being said? So although Jesus loved Martha, and Mary. You get it? That also changes everything. Go to verse 6. He stayed where he was for the next two days. That is agape love. Agape love is not moved by emotions. It is not moved by feelings. That is agape love. That is the love that Jesus had. That although this first love was, oh, your friend is dying, the one you love, that one would just make him run. Praise the Lord. Agape love, this is the love of God that will help you make very sober decisions. Praise the Lord. Jesus didn't just rush because they said, and that is why when he got there and Lazarus had died, he told the disciples, it is good that I was not there. Why? It is good that I was not there. Because since he was not there, the testimony was greater. He had died for four days and he was brought back to life. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. So at times you feel like it is good that this season has happened like this because our light will shine brighter. The world will look at you and they will admire your God because of how you've come out of this season. Because of how your life has not gone down. Things may have gone down around you, but you are a peculiar people. You are a royal priesthood. First Peter 2.9, he tells us that, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. There is no way you're going to show forth his praises if you're just fitting in. The only way his praises can be seen from you is when you are peculiar. And he's called you to be peculiar. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. I want us to just bow our heads.